Gale Kingsmill, and today, of course, I'm talking about Pokemon Go just like everyone else on the planet. Okay, this may be an exaggeration. I know it's not out in a lot of places yet, and I know that Australia and New Zealand got the, uh, got the first uh, little dip into the official opened uh, app. I actually uh, am a couple of days behind Australia and even I think a day or two behind the US release of the app because I wanted to make sure that I sort of sorted out at least some more information on why my camera on my phone has been messing with me and I mean I haven't fixed it but I've worked out But I have worked out enough to know that uh, it seems like I'm not going to lose any app progress. So I have finally downloaded the Pokemon Go app and let me tell you, I am loving it. I should probably turn down the music but I like it. So I mean, let's just, uh, my starter, I did end up choosing Charmander. My childhood fave. Um, I, I know a lot of people have been talking about don't worry about your starter because you're not going to end up using it much. Um, and everyone's kind of focused on like CP combat points, I think that's what it stands for. And you know, kind of making the best Pokemon that you can and choosing... You know, there's lots of things. If you get two of the same Pokemon, you can take the one with the better combat points and drain the other one in for candy and stuff. It's, look, it's a thing. But you know what? I say fie. Fie to that. I just think it's it's a little bit... I, I know that a lot of sort of Pokemon culture has been surrounding, you know, breeding the best Pokemon that you possibly can, but I just feel like the core thing in Pokemon for a really long time has been that you don't need necessarily the strongest Pokemon. It's about loving your Pokemon, and while that's, you know, kind of hippie and moralistic in a lot of ways, I mean, that's like the... the spoken moral of the Pokemon Origins movie, man. So I just, I feel attached to my, uh, to my starter Charmander. And honestly, even if I caught a stronger one, I'm not sure if I would, uh, if I would trade it in. His name is Cassius, I'm very attached to him. Actually, I didn't intend to go into Pokemon Go with the same Shakespearean theme that I used in my Nuzlocke, but, um, upon realizing that I never named a Pokemon Cassius, that seemed really weird to me because Cassius is my favorite Shakespearean character, Cassius from, uh, Julius Caesar. Julius is my favorite because, I don't know, I'm a big nerd and I picked a weird one. And so, every one of my Pokemon has ended up with Shakespearean names again. I actually went down to the lake, I live near a lake, and about five minutes after catching my starter, I caught a Squirtle as well, and I'm so excited! So I mean, hopefully I can find some Bulbasaurs in the coming week and make it a hat trick, that would be lovely. But I named my Squirtle Brutus, even though that was the name of my gone too soon Onyx, and that's maybe a thing that I shouldn't have done, but I just liked the idea that I had the fire and the water starters and that they were both Cassius and Brutus from Julius Caesar. But then that means that if I do catch a Bulbasaur, like, do I, should I name it Ophelia after Ophelia? Because, oh. She still, she left with a part of my soul. Or do I try to name her, like, Calpurnia? Like, another Julius Caesar name? These are, these are nerd problems. I'm very aware that these are very specific, minute problems. And I'm already, I'm looking at these Pokemon, and I'm kind of thinking, oh, which ones are gonna be, like, my defense team? Which ones are gonna be my offense team? And it's just, I knew that I was gonna love Pokemon Go. I didn't know that I was going to get into it this much. I've got this one egg, I haven't done much work in, uh, in hatching it yet. I'm only level 4, so I'm not even up to actually joining a team and battling yet. I've only made one trip out into the world. But between you and me, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to end up joining Team Valor. I'm just saying. Which is awkward because my friends and I did not coordinate properly and so of the people who've already joined teams, one is in Team Instinct and one is in Team Mystic and here I am already planning Team Valor so there's gonna be this tension. You know what's really amazing is that I don't think any of us actually believed the trailers for Pokemon Go when they were like, and it'll bring people together and look at all these people standing around and fighting the Pokemon together and they're all gathering in places and talking to strangers and we were all like, mm, yeah, sure, whatever Pokemon. But then you get things like, when I went down on my only trip so far, down by the lake, you know, there were a couple of people walking past looking at their phones and we asked them if they were 
playing Pokemon Go and they were and we had a little chat and we traded information. My phone just buzzed. And then as I was walking around the lake, like not five minutes later, two guys rode past on bikes and just said, oh yeah, there's heaps of Charmander around the corner. And that's just on such a small scale. My friend Adara, just the other night, posted a Facebook status saying that it was 1am and all around Wollongong Harbour there were just groups of people standing together in the freezing cold putting in lure modules onto all of the Pokestops there. And then if one ran out, someone else would fill in with a new one. And it, would, it just brought so many people together at the harbour at one in the morning. And everyone was pointing out where rare Pokemon were and helping each other to find stuff. That's incredible! It's the coolest thing in the world! Oh my goodness! So yes, Pokemon Go already has my heart, even after just one trip out into the world. Apparently, one of the suburbs next to mine is like an Eevee hotspot, so I'm there, man. I am a little bummed, I've heard that, okay, as someone who grew up in a rural town, I'm really uh, sad on behalf of all the people who live out, whoop whoop, who apparently are just not finding any Pokemon. Because I get why cities are gonna have a high density of Pokemon even if it doesn't necessarily make heaps of sense geographically because, you know, the game wants the most people to get the most out of it so it's like, there's a huge population density here, we'll make sure there's lots of Pokemon. But I don't see why that means that little towns should get no Pokemon. We're in the early days and I have high hopes that they will be kind of working on these things and leveling everything out as they go. If you've been playing Pokemon Go, let me know uh, what you've caught, what your favourite catches are, some of the names you've given your Pokemon maybe, or if you happen to be one of the poor unfortunate souls who lives somewhere where the game has not been released yet, uh, let me know what you're looking forward to. What Pokemon do you most desire to catch? Very quickly before I finish, I mentioned on Twitter the other day, but I'd like to throw it out here as well. I mentioned ages ago, back during the Kickstarter, Basic Adventuring 101, which is Kristen Brumley's baby. Who you, you might remember Kristen Brumley from the Geek and Sundry vlogger search. She had this brilliant series on LARPing that was the thing that suddenly made me turn around and go, Oh wow, LARPing's really cool, I can't believe I never realised it before. It's a show about LARPers, by LARPers, through the lens of someone new to the hobby. It has some really funny writing, it has this great thing it does where it juxtaposes the sort of in-character view of the world with uh, little funny scenes out of character. I mean, I don't want to spoil anything, but that scene with Ranger and the glow sticks was one of my favourite things ever. And that series is finally here! It's finally out in the world, and I realised a little late, but now I'm, I'm in it. So there's a link over here, you can click on it and it'll take you to the show, I highly recommend it. If you enjoyed this video then I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like button down below because it really helps the video out a lot, as does sharing it on your favourite social media website. I myself am also on many social media websites, you can find my links in the description below if you would like to follow me there. I will no doubt be tweeting about my Pokemon. Oh, there's this meme on Tumblr that's so you draw your Pokemon team from Pokemon Go, tag it with Pokemon Journey, I might do that at some point. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to this channel to get videos from me on the regular. A solid half of those videos are storytelling videos where I retell stories from mythology or sometimes fairy tales. And then the rest of them are like ge geeky obscurities, like this one. I need to get me a full-on trainer outfit. Like I need to go to Kmart and just buy a bunch of colour-coded clothes that make me look like a Pokemon trainer. Hell yes. Apart from that, I think that's it. I'm done. Email this to your grandma and I will see you some other time. Mm -hmm. Where were the warriors of sunlight and zoo? Moose. I always say Zeus. Ugh. Mythology gets into your head and it never leaves.